No, maybe I wait for Eric. <laughs> Oh, you are welcome. Can it's very kind of you to to attend. Maybe I, I should start. No, sir. Uh, so this is my last uh, lecture. Uh, in fact, as you have seen, I have. Uh, what I have presented relates with intertemporal economics. Is it public economics uh, when I talk about climate change issue? Okay, it was, I would say, non standard public economic. But I think it's uh, becoming fashionable public economics. I think it will, uh, it will be a subject that will last for some time, and that there are many, many questions that are raised by uh, climate policy. Okay, I hope I convince you about that. Anyway. Anyway, now what I'm doing an intertemporal uh, with expectational coordination. Uh, it's also related to economics in a sense because I will talk about, for example, the Taylor rule. Okay, but that's uh, uh, public macroeconomics. Okay, so what we should do, what the government should do when macroeconomic issues are concerned. Okay, so it's certainly far from standard. Uh, public economics, of, of standard intertemporal public economics. I hope it's not too far from the from your main subject to attract your interest. Anyway, I'll start where I stopped last time. I will say briefly, uh, I will come briefly on what I s started to say last time uh, before to. Uh, and I started, maybe you remember, I started with a pamphlet okay, by uh, Willem Buiter. I will, I will not repeat the pamphlet. I will only put the last part of the pamphlet uh, to remind you about the argument. Okay? Basically, he argued that uh, 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 our uh, modeling, the, uh, our, argue, our reasoning on the, when the issues um, of asset pricing are concerned, for example, where uh, the, the, the far future is concerned, okay? our reasoning are uh, rely on deus ex machina, in a sense, okay? and that he was critical of that. Uh, that is a godlike father figure who makes sure that nothing untoward happens with long-term price expectation. And that, that's really the, the issue that is behind uh, the beginning of my talk today, on, on the end of my talk. Uh, and I will, uh, as I t will tell you, I will agree to some extent with Peter, or disagree to some extent, uh, uh, I, I will give argument in, on, on both sides. So, given that, I f last time I present, I'm sorry, I made. Oh, yeah, so, so I, I came to the, uh, what I did last time very quickly is that I told you about my preferred view of expectational coordination. Okay, the, the, the idea is that in all what I'm presenting, the idea is that the rational expectation hypothesis is a focal point, okay, which, is, which is very important, we should consider it, but that we should also be concerned with the plausibility of the rational expectation equilibrium. Okay. And to assess the plausibility, you have many ways, okay, you have many provided a certain number of them, and one of them is learning, standard evolutive learning, that has a long history, obviously. The other one I like, because I am being involved in that, is called, I call eductive learning, okay? To reduce is to guess, okay? Uh, eductive learning, the, the, the word eductive was invented by... Uh, Binmore. Binmore, by Ken Binmore, yes. yes. Uh, it was uh, in a different context, but I think it can be taken here. Uh, and uh, so, eductive learning, I, I presented you uh, the basic argument okay, that suggests that if you take a market equilibrium, in some case, in market, the simplest market equilibrium, which is uh, the, the partial equilibrium story, you have farmers or firms that have to decide on the size of their crops or the size of their investment, if you wish. And tomorrow there will be a demand curve. Okay? If you had a Valarash auctioneer, everybody will be around the table and we will quote the price and we will find the price. Okay? Uh, now, if you have to decide, all these people have to decide at the first period alone, and uh, we assume that they know the world, uh, by knowing the world, they know the demand tomorrow, but they know also individual supply, in fact, aggregate supply is enough, 
aggregate competitive supply, okay, is enough, and they think about the system. Uh, and, and, yeah? This, you, got, uh, you notice you have a condition. It's, just, it's not all you are with. You got the modeling. There's a stability condition, C less than B. Yeah, that's, that's the conclusion, yeah. In, 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 in multi-dimensions, that fails. That argument fails. Oh, in multi-dimensional, there are other arguments and there are other results. Okay. Okay, no, no, but uh, this condition is rather demanding. Uh, so so I'll, I'll, I'll come back on that. So this is the simplest word, but on, people know this world in the sense they know how it works. They have to decide today. And they know that the other know, and they know that the other know that the other know, and the other know, and they think about the system. So as I told you last time, uh, they first understand that the price cannot be greater than this maximal price at the starting point, that supply cannot be greater than the supply that will occur is this price was as high as that. Okay. Then from that they know that demand cannot be, the, the, the equilibrium prices cannot be smaller than some P1. Okay. So after thinking that the, about the system at one stage, okay, they know that the price cannot be greater, so it has to be between P0 and P1. And if it has to be greater than P1, they know that supply, because all these people uh, look at price, know that, they know that supply will be greater than S of P1, so they know that, and et cetera, and the process converges very quickly here in two steps, you are almost at the equilibrium. Okay. But why does this process converge only if C is smaller than B? Okay. And uh, this condition is not new in the, in the literature, okay, the, the cobweb, con what, what, what takes place in people's mind, in fact, is the cobweb tattenment. Okay, the cobweb tattenment is that you believe that the price tomorrow will be the price today. And the, the economy goes on like this. Okay. And it converts or does not converge. We know that we have known for long that in some cases it converts, in some cases it does not convert, the cobweb tattenment. Here the argument is that the inductive condition is the same as the one fourth convergence of the cobweb tattenment. And the next point I made is that in fact, thinking in this very abstract way, is a shortcut to doing uh, evolutive learning. That is a very complicated exercise. Okay? And I, I, I argue that f from this diagram, or say this diagram is as you look at the, the, uh, uh, the adaptive learning process. Okay, that's say, you, know, you are in real time. The farmers look at the price today. So they change their expectation depending on whether they have been wrong or not by some uh, coefficient. And the, uh, they, they may react very quickly, but not very quickly, and so on. And here, uh, what you see is that if C over B is smaller than 1, that's my condition, that's a very abstract condition, the condition based on an abstract argument, okay, then all this learning process converge, whatever alpha. Okay. Now, when B, C over B, B is greater than 1, which uh, for, me, for me there is a, a break here in this continuity, for learning process, it's not the case. It's, it's only the case that you have less and less learning process that converge. Okay, alpha has to be smaller and smaller in order to be converging. Okay, but with this B over C coefficient, we have captured some key exogenous variable that governs the stability of, of the expectational stability of the equilibrium. That, 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 that at least the, the point I wanted to make. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll come back maybe to, to so th th this uh, inductive stability criterion, uh, I, I gave a, a definition here. Naturally, as you can guess, we are, in, we are in a complex world. We cannot expect global inductive stability. That means that in this world, there will be a unique rationalizable equilibrium. We, we can expect that in simple world, but not in global. When you have several equilibria, naturally, you cannot have global inductive stability. What you can expect will be local inductive stability, whose definition is here, which says that for some reason you assume, you, you, you do as if it was known, and com it was common knowledge that the equilibrium will, will be in the neighborhood of, 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 the, of the true equilibrium. Okay. And with that, you look at whether the inductive process, the learning process, converge or not from that. So, and if it converts, then it's common knowledge from this initial common knowledge assumption, it's common knowledge that's equal is star. Okay. So the, the question you raise in a sense, if you are with a game theoretical, uh, uh, you are a game theoretical person, you are, you are asking the question, okay, saying that the equilibrium is E star, that e, the fact that the equilibrium 
is this star is common knowledge is a sensible assertion. Okay. The question is, is there, is there a sensible assertion? Can you, you say that there exists V of E star, different of E star, such that E belongs to V of E star, is, a, is common knowledge, is a, is a sensible assertion. Okay. If it's yes, you say it's stable. If it's not yes, you say it's not stable. Another way to see it locally is that what you want to find is a small neighborhood of the equilibrium such that if everybody believes that the equilibrium is this, this small neighborhood, then this belief cannot be falsified, whatever the form of the belief. Okay? There is a small neighborhood of the equilibrium such that if everybody really believes, okay, we don't know exactly what they believe, but if they believe that it's in this neighborhood, ah, <laughs> contradictor is coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so, so that's a very low-tech view, okay, that, 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 uh, it's really a low-tech view, it sells you realization, the, the, the elasticity of realization to expectation is small, okay, it's not too huge, okay, so, so you, you, you don't need to, uh, when you, you can explain that even in people who have no, not, no, no, no game theory, uh, uh, background at all, okay? You, it's a say, uh, what happens is not very sensitive to expectation. Okay. Okay, so, so I will give maybe a few, uh, since Ken raised the question of uh, what can be said when you have more dimension, okay? Here is a, I, I, I will provide some very short snap snapshot on how you can have a theory. Uh, I have a more static theory, I'm mean, in the same setting, okay? People, have to decide today what they do depends on what they can do, obviously, but uh, on, on what they expect on the aggregate state of the economy, that I call E. Okay? And they are too small to, to, to influence the aggregate state, because they are atomistic agents. Okay? And uh, in this world, uh, you can define the uh, best response mapping, for example, uh, gamma of Mr. I, if you believe that uh, the state of the economy will be EA, so it's the best response uh, to the belief that uh, is in A. It, uh, you can also the best response of Mr. I when he believes that the s well, there are some probability distribution on what can happen. Okay, I call it B I of P of X. And naturally, his star is a rational expectation equilibrium is gamma of his star, which is the integral of B of I of his star, D I equal his star. So it's a, you take all the uh, response of the people, you aggregate. If they believe that this star takes place, this star takes place. Okay. That, that, that's the function that associates. Um, uh, but, but basically, the, the, the state is really the, the aggregation of the best response. Okay. It's, it's too simplistic, but uh, that it, it makes it, uh, uh, for, for example, in the Moose model, uh, the, the aggregate crop is the sum of the crop decided by every people, so it's the state is the aggregate crop, it's like this. Now, uh, I, I just want to, I, I don't want to go really into it, but naturally with that you can, you can define a certain number of concepts that relate with uh, expectational coordination. Okay. The first I call it the cobweb mapping. Okay. You, uh, how do you define the cobweb mapping? You take a state of the economy and you assume that everybody believes that this state takes place, like in the cobwebs tatonement. Okay? The, uh, the today state is taken as the next, as a future state by everybody. Okay? So everybody believes that the state will take place. Now, given that, given this, the state that is expected, what will be the state that will take place? What will be the best response to this belief? Okay? And if you do that for all the states, okay, and you iterate that, Okay. You first, you, first you take the best response, you aggregate the best response, you have a new state, then you take the best response from this new state. Okay. You, you have what can be called, it's a kind of uh, cobweb mapping in the sense that what will happen in an economy in which there will be a time, we will start at time zero by the state of the economy being uh, the initial state and going on. Okay. And you can do that for whatever the initial state. And so cobweb tatonment comes as really what you can obtain as an outcome of this process, whatever the starting point. Okay. Now, th th there is a second, 
which is related with uh, the game theoretical framework is that uh, uh, assume that take B of I of X. What does that mean? Uh, that means that the pe people believe that the state is in X. Okay. But no, they believe that Mr. I has a point expectation in X. Mr. J has a different point expectation in X. And all of them have different point expectation in X. Okay, for example, the farmers believe that the price will be between uh, five and seven. Okay, but they can have an X price expectation in X. Okay, and I look at for all the possible set of such belief, what can happen? And what can happen is called PR of X. Okay, so it's the integral formally is, a, is the integral of this uh, set valued mapping. B of i of x, but that means that you is B of i of x1 plus B of, of x of i, B of i, B of j of x of j, and so on. And you look at what is here. And what you call the set of point rationalizable state is the largest set such that PR of x equals x. That's standard view of rationalizability, but that put in the, let me say, in an economic framework. Okay. Uh, so what is the Point rationable set is a it's a set in which if you p if you pick a belief of people that are in this set, then the outcome is is, is in this set. Okay, if you take point expectation of people in this set, then the outcome is, is in this set. Now, any point in this set obtains as triggered by belief that come from this set. Okay, and that's the largest set. For example. Uh, the, the, the fact that PR of X is equal X is true for the Nash equal, the, the, the equilibrium, strictly speaking. But yeah, that's the larger set that did. And then the next concept is a set of rationalizable states where you change the view. You always take a set, but you, you assume that people may have probabilistic expectation on it. Okay, and that's the larger set of that did. Okay, that, that's a little bit uh, abstract, but I will. I, I just want to give. Uh, a few pictures to, to answer uh, Ken's uh, question. Not only you, you, you have a certain number of obvious stuff. The set of equilibria is included in the convex set of equilibria, by uh, definition. It's included in the cobweb tatton mode com, which is included in the point rationalizable state, which is included in the set of rationalizable state. Okay. And when, uh, so, Basically, uh, you can have a, a terminology, I will not go into it, when E equals R, okay, I say that it's strongly rational or it's uh, inductively stable, or so, that was the, the Moot model, E equals R equals the set of point rationalizable story. Okay. But in some cases, you, you have only that E equals C, uh, that may be E, and without being equal to it. So, 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 so you can construct, I only want to show that you can construct in theory. You can do, do the theory at the local level. Okay, in the local level, you can look at uh, uh, iteration of belief locally that relate with either cobweb tattonement, point expectation, or general uh, expectation. Okay, and the, there are connections, there are some equivalents here. Now, in order to make the connection with, no, le, 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 I had a one-dimensional example. Now I take a multi-dimensional example, but in which I put some regularity that are strategic complementarity. Okay, so you have those people, for example, the state, the, 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 the set of states is two-dimensional. Okay, it's uh, the crop of uh, corn and the crop of, uh, uh, tell me something, wheat. Okay, and, uh, but, it, there are strategic complementarities, which is completely wrong for crops. Okay, crops you have strategic suitability. The higher the expected crop, the less the, the realized crop. Okay, no, but assume that in a world with strategic complementarities, I mean the higher the, the first dimension, the more you want to respond. The higher the second dimension, the more you want to respond. Okay, and in both dimensions, okay, you have strategic complementarity. Why is that? Because there, there are many cases in which this occurs. Actually, why? Do I look sh focus on this case because it's well known in game theory? Okay. Now the standard result of game theory has to be adapted because the framework is somewhat uh, uh, does not. It, it, you have an infinite number of agents; they're atomistic and so on. But naturally, the, the result has the similar flavor, uh, and the flavor is that 
the set of equilibria between a minimum equilibria and a maximum equilibria. And all the set, the Cournot atonement outcome, the point rationalizable and the rationalizable as between these equilibria. Okay, so uh, that's, uh, I suppose it's, uh, no. Yes, so, so they are between these equilibria. And all, that's really a nice result if you like uh, mathematical economics of, uh, that was fashionable in my time, that all these sets are convex, so they are beautiful sets, so they are, uh, uh, no, it's, uh, it's no longer fashionable to be convex, but it used to be. Uh, now, I, I showed you the one dimension version of that, okay? Uh, that, that, so the, the one dimensional version here is uh, E, is along this axis, so it's one dimensional, uh, for example, the, it would be the crop, but the crop is not the strategic complementarity. Okay, that may be the, the economic activity, the level of economic activity, and here you have the, uh, the, 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 the best response to, th to this level of economic activity, and that's the best response function, the aggregate best response function, which is called gamma of E. Okay, and you know here, you have only one equilibrium, okay, and this equilibrium it's a Graal, okay? It's unique equilibrium. We like unique equilibrium. But furthermore, it's seductively stable, okay? It has all the nice properties that we expect. P people, if people think, they will find it in the way I, I suggest and so on. Okay. But naturally, this uh, beautiful view is uh, different if there are three equilibria, okay? So according to my theorem, what is the set? So the, you all this, naturally, the middle equilibrium is between the Smallest equilibrium on the highest one, that's uh, totally straightforward. Uh, but that's, uh, uh, and uh, you see that what is the set of ration, Cournot, Tatton, Montcom, point rationalizable equilibria or rationalizable is all is that is in, all that is in between is here, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, no, locally, this equilibrium is stable and this equilibrium is stable. So. Let me say the high activity equilibrium that we like is stable. The low activity, the crisis equilibrium is also stable. And in, in the middle, uh, everything can happen. Okay. Now, uh, just last, so. I one, one unstable. One unstable, yes, yeah, locally unstable. So if you have in a two-dimensional world, what happens is that, okay, here is a, Lowest equilibrium, here is the highest equilibrium, here is a set of ra rationalizable state, and the other equilibria, if any, are some, somewhere here in this rationalizable state. Okay. So that, that's for strategic complementarity. Uh, that results which are in line with all the game theoretical results that we, that we know. With strategic suitability, which is the case interesting, for example, the case of the Moussian model, but it's also the case in many macroeconomic contexts, okay, between macroeconomic contexts, the higher economic activity, uh, if you have more output, then you, you have the price competition, so that, that, that goes towards strategic stability. But the higher the economic outcome, the higher income the people have. So through the Keynesian multiplier, you have also higher purchasing power, there are two forces. But the strategic stability dominates, in fact. Anyway, so I'll show you now we have results like this with strategic stability, multidimensional strategic stability, but then no, uh, the, 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 the relevant uh, points are the cycles of order two. Okay, the, the, so all these sets are included between two cycles of order two of the system. I will show you that in the Moose model, not in general, but that's that general. Okay, in the Moose model, uh, here is the uh, uh, cobweb function is the sense I put here expected crop and the realized crop. So if expected crop is very low, realized crop is very high because people expect that the price will be very high. Okay. And it decreases like this. So it's not exactly, it, it decreases like this. And here you see the equilibrium here, the, the slope here is greater than one. That corresponds to uh, C greater than B. Okay. So it's, this equilibrium is not deductively stable locally. Okay. And uh, so what, what is a set of rationalizable state? It's anything between the cobweb, the, 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 the cycle of order two, the cobweb cycles. Okay? Here you have a cobweb cycle. If everybody believes that this, 
that, 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 that the production will be A star, then it's, uh, that it will be low, then it's high. It's a, if everybody believes that it's low, it's high. If everybody that it's high, it's low. Okay, and that's a cycle of order two. And that's the set. If you believe in this, if you, if you, if you are, uh, if you believe in this theory, you cannot predict what happens, but you can only say that it should, uh, it should be, uh, okay, which is a, a very unpopular statement. Uh, but I will not uh, go on in, along this line. Okay, so I have finished with uh, uh, this uh, <coughs> introduction to my preferred test of. Uh, of uh, expectational stability, and I'll come back to, to Buiter, okay? I'll come back to Buiter, and I will take the, the simplest model, and the simplest model will allow me to explain the Taylor rule, so it's, why, so it's, it's okay, uh, because uh, we, we, we are immediately at the frontier of uh, <coughs> theory and policy. Uh, now, the simplest model uh, will be uh, one step forward looking, one dimensional, no memory system. So what, what does that mean? That means that yt, what happens today, is equal to what people expect that will happen tomorrow, yt plus one expected, multiplied by some number, a. Okay, what happens today depends on what happens tomorrow. So I, here I have a point expectations that are the same for everybody, okay? Let's assume that they are the same for everybody. A, y, t equal A, y expected t plus one. Okay. Now, uh, here I have a, f uh, a more sophisticated form in order to take into account my uh, inductive viewpoint, okay? Where in which people are different, they have different beliefs and so on. So the more sophisticated version I may allude to is that y, t, in fact, is equal A, and in fact, it's an integral of what P Mr. W believes of T plus one multiplied by the weight of Mr. W. Okay. What he believes may, 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 uh, may be important than what believes some others. So what happens is a convex combination of what all the people in the, uh, of what the, people in the society believe multiplied by this number A. Okay. Is, is that now, in this model, first, you have a very simple equilibrium. It's called a steady state. Okay, it's y t equals zero. Okay, if y t equals zero, that's a rational expectation equilibrium, perfect for size equilibrium. Y t equals believe that y t equals zero triggers realization of y t equals zero. But that's why you have many other equilibria. Okay. And uh, you have a perfect for sight equilibrium. It's only a sequence, y t, such that y t equals a y t plus one at each time. Okay. Uh, now you have many equilibria in this world. We, we, we face the Dwitter problems. Uh, so which one should, should we take? Okay. Uh, so the, the standard argument is that we should take the steady state at least under some circumstances. Okay. And there are several criteria. I will present you four criteria, mine after that, but uh, I will present you four criteria. The first one, which is um, uh, more, uh, very popular, is called determinacy. We say that the t the steady state is determinate, okay, if there is no perfect foresight equilibrium close to it. Okay. So you see here, uh, if I have a perfect foresight equilibrium with yt here, yt plus one here, uh, that means that uh, y t a uh, is smaller than a is greater than one here, okay? You have yt which is greater than yt plus one, so that means that a is greater than one, okay? And here you have a smaller than one, you have yt here, yt plus one here, so it's going away. Uh, in which case would you say that the steady state equilibrium is good? In this second case, determinacy is this case, okay? It says that the equilibria, the other equilibria are not close to the steady state. So we, we can single out the steady state. It makes sense because it's isolated. When you are in this case, you don't like it because you say close to the steady state, you have this equilibrium is close to the steady state and it becomes closer and closer as you go away. So you, you, the steady state has a lot of equilibria in its neighborhood. So people will not be able to. So that, that's one criterion. Okay? That, one, that really is a criterion to, to 
single out the Taylor rule, for example. Uh, so the condition from that is that A should be smaller than 1. Okay, we should be in that case. That's determinacy. So we like this equilibrium. We believe in it if A is smaller than 1. If A is greater than 1, even if you, uh, you, don't, you, don't, you, you, you are suspicious vis-à-vis -vis of this equilibrium, to say it, uh, maybe more. Now there are other uh, criteria of expectation of stability. Another criterion is uh, you have not a sunspot equilibrium in the neighborhood of the steady state. Okay. What is a sunspot equilibrium? It's, uh, you, you, you have some, uh, it's something that says that if you have sun on the, uh, if you have a sunspot, uh, then the state of the economy will be Y of S. If you have no sunspot, it will be Y of NS. Okay. So you have Y of S. Here I have put y of s on y of s prime. Okay, so so in the sky you look at the sunspot, and when you have a sunspot, then the state is y of s, and when you have no sunspot, the state is y of s prime. Why? It's because people believe that the state of the economy is governed by this process. So when they observe the state of the sunspot today, this gives us some belief on the sunspot tomorrow. And this belief on the sunspot tomorrow plus the theory supports the sunspot today. Okay. So uh, here is a, is, a, is a story. Okay, the sunspot, uh, here you have the, it, it, here the, that's the level of, ac of economic activity in case of sunspot. Here is the level of activity in case of no sunspot. I have put them at the same level here. Now, if uh, A is, a, you, I, I, I have taken the case where A <coughs> is greater than 1, then now assume that when I am, when there is sunspot here, I believe that tomorrow, this state, there will be sunspot with a probability close to one, and no sunspot with a probability this small. Okay, that means that on average, I believe that the state tomorrow will be there. Okay, and that supports the belief that the equilibrium, the sunspot equilibrium today is that. In the same way, if, I, if there is no sunspot, then I believe that tomorrow there will be this with some probability on this, with some probability, but on average that means I believe that. Okay. Then you, you see, uh, in the case of A greater than 1, I can construct as many sunspot equilibria as I want. Okay. Uh, I could go on, in fact, it, uh, so in a nonlinear system they would be also related with the existence of cycles, in the, in, but that, that's something else. Okay, so, if there are sunspot equilibria, it's not good, okay? Because you have a you have a stationary equilibrium. After all, you have other stationary equilibria that are very close. Why would you choose the non-sunspot one? At least that, uh, because when you think of sunspot, it might be something that has a very very small effect on the economy, not a zero effect on the, but a very very small in which people will overreact. Okay, it might be uh, it might be called an overreaction equilibrium if you if you want. Uh, okay, so again. The condition is that no sunspot equilibrium, okay, and that the condition is A smaller than 1. We will not like that. That's the second, con so, so we, find, we find the second. If it's the criterion you like, you find the same conclusion. Now, there is something I call expectational stability, i.e. stability, uh, in which, uh, in fact, this criterion comes from the macroeconomic literature of the end of the 80s, in fact. Okay, it was called iterative expectational stability. And uh, it said that, but it was not applied in this model, but naturally, assume that people believe that uh, y of t is between, uh, between some bound, okay? Uh, and they iterate this conjecture, okay? But you know that y of t is between this bound here, okay? But if you know that it's between this bound, if for example, y of t plus one is here, you know that y of t will be Small, closer to here. If A greater than 1, you, 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 you know, uh, your, your, your conjecture will go out. So if you think about this initial conjecture, you iterate it, okay, then it converts to the steady state. And again, the condition is A smaller than 1. Okay. That's uh, the criterion that is the closest to my inductive stability argument. My inductive stability argument will be to say, hypothetically, people believe that the state will not be far from the steady state in this setting, and they think about it and they iterate. But my criterion, 
uh, is not equivalent in the sense that if all the weight here are positive, okay, if, if the reaction of all the people in the society to an increase in yt in the same direction, then it coincides with instability. When some people react positively to a high yt plus one or negatively to another one, then it goes the other way around and it does not work. So my criterion is more demanding than that because it takes into account heterogeneity of expectation that may or may not matter depending on the situation of the situation. Okay, now there is a fourth criterion which I uh, no, uh, will not define here, but uh, it's uh, the convergence of reasonable adaptive learning rule. Okay, in this world, I can learn about, uh, I, I can look at, I can learn from the past, make projection on yt plus one in the future through an adaptive learning rule, okay, uh, like the one I have here. So does this adaptive learning rule converge, whatever alpha? And I had also, uh, I'm sorry, I had also a last condition. I said that the reasonable, I had a, another condition, I cheat a little bit, they detect cycles of order two. If they are able to detect cycles of order two, what does that mean? That means you, the data coming from odd period and the data coming from even period that put in different boxes and you revise your belief differently at odd times and even times. Why that? Because if there was a cycle, you will be able to find it. Okay? If you don't do that, you will never find the cycle, obviously. Now, the, the, the theorem here is the following. In this model, the four criteria are determinacy. So you, you, you don't like to have an equilibrium in the neighborhood. You don't like to have a sunspot equilibrium in the neighborhood. You don't like to have expectational instability. And you would like to have convergence of all reasonable adaptive learning rules. Okay. These four criteria are equivalent and select the determinate steady state. Okay. They are, they are, they are in, in, this, in this setting. Okay. And, and that one is locally, this is a local result I have taken. The, okay. Now, I will take a, a model like this. Okay. Uh, that will be the. The, the, a model in which you have a continuum of agents, okay, and everyone gets a quantity B of good at each period. There is a mana, okay, we are, mana are well known here, yeah, so it's every, uh, every, every day, and uh, everybody has B, okay, under the same quantity of mana. Uh, and now, the question is that the good, there is money, it's a cashless economy. Okay? Money does not serve any purpose for, of transaction, but it serves to, uh, uh, it serves as a numeraire. Okay? The price of good is in terms of money. Yeah, so, so, so you make exchange in terms of money. So the, the money price of good, naturally, is called a cashless economy, in the sense you need no cash in this economy. The price is pity. Okay? And people have a, Isoelastic utility function, again, uh, we, ha we have taken uh, a lot of isoelastic utility function, 1 over 1 minus sigma ct to the power, I'm sorry, it's not well written, it's power 1 minus sigma. Okay, in my uh, global warming uh, lecture, I had sigma prime here, instead of the sigma was for something else, but no, it's sick. So it should not be. Uh <laughs> now, what are the first? Uh, the equilibrium is clearly an equilibrium in which there is no exchange, okay? And, uh, but naturally it has to be a market equilibrium, so there should be an interest rate, okay? People should decide not to save and to consume all, okay? So, so you, have, you, have a, you have certainly um, an interest rate, <coughs> a nominal interest rate here that sells you how much money you get when you give up one unit of money today, okay, which I call IT. Okay, and uh, uh, what are the first order conditions? That the real interest rate, okay, one plus the real interest rate, equal one over beta u prime of ct plus one over u prime of ct. That's the Euler equation, okay, which says, uh, and naturally in this case, in equilibrium, u prime of ct plus one equal u prime of ct, since they consume uh, all the. Uh, so the first order condition, 
that determine uh, so as of the form 1 plus it and 1 plus it being divided by pi t plus 1, the rate of inflation between t and t plus 1, equal 1 over beta. That means that 1 plus the real, the real interest rate, okay, it plus 1 has to, uh, you have to, to take into account the real interest rate, not the nominal interest rate, equal 1 over beta, which is the marginal rate of, which, which is, uh, Trigger by the man channel rate of substitution between consumption between today and tomorrow. Okay, one over one beta is equal to one plus r. It is a standard interest rate. Okay. Now, what about? Otherwise, the equilibrium depends on the joint source of the inflation rate and the nominal interest rate. Okay. And in this world, whatever the inflation rate you choose, you can choose nominal interest rate in such a way that it triggers the, the real. The same real interest rate, which it triggers the same allocation. So you have many equilibria as you wish, with any, uh, as many uh, equilibrium paths as you wish. Uh, and in fact, naturally, in real terms, the equilibrium is, I, I mentioned that already, but it's here, okay? Uh, <coughs> naturally, one would like to have, for example, the one. Uh, reference equilibrium with some targeted inflation. We like to have inflation equal to pi star, okay? uh, pi, with pi star is a rate of inflation. And uh, so, but the rate of inflation pi star, it's an equilibrium. Okay, if, if I if assume that the inflation is always pi star, then uh, uh, one plus it over pi star will be, will be I star will be equal to such that one of I star over pi star equal one over beta, you will have always the same real uh, interest rate and you will go on, on, the, on, on the path. Okay. But now the question is that, but at all, there are so many equilibria that we, we feel a little bit uneasy. But we say, in fact, the, there is a central bank, okay? And the central bank, in fact, controls the nominal interest rate, but not the inflation rate. So, does it make sense to give the central bank a rule that will make that some equilibrium is more satisfactory in terms of expectational coordination than, than some other? Okay. So, what we will be, we will do, we, the central bank will announce that the interest rate, the monetary interest rate that it sets up is a function of the inflation rate at time t. Okay, it's a little bit, uh, I, I could have other assumptions, could be on the inflation rate of, of the previous period, of the next period, but uh, it's much easier in this way. Uh, so it will be a question that comes on fees increasing. So it announced that the nominal interest rate will increase with the inflation rate that is observed at period t. Okay, I of t will increase the nom uh, nominal interest rate. <coughs> And it also announced uh, an inflation target, pi star, But really, you, you see that one that the format is here, okay? Uh, I put pi, pi t plus one in this, on this side. Okay, so, so pi, to, 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 to be uh, coherent, the fee of pi stars, the nominal interest rate you choose when you have pi star, must be sure that the real interest rate is equal one over is related to one over beta, is equal one over beta minus one. Okay? Is that clear? The question is, what is a good fee? What is a good rule for the central bank? And uh, if you follow what I have said until now, then uh, it should be something that guarantees that the equilibrium has some good properties. For example, that the guarantees that the equilibrium, the targeted equilibrium, is determinate. Okay? So we'll try to do that. So, so we want the determin we take determinacy as a concept, is, and the reference equilibrium has to be locally isolated. Now, we look at, at the margin, okay? uh, we look at, at this equation, and uh, so the pi star forever is an equilibrium, but there are neighbor equilibrium. Okay, neighbor equilibrium satisfy what? Beta, so for different rate, uh, for different rate of inflation, beta one plus phi of pi of t, because if you have inflation pi of t, you will have a nominal interest rate of phi of pi of t, okay? 
equal pi of t plus 1. Okay, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a basic formula. Okay. So if you take close to the equilibrium pi, starting from the equilibrium pi star, you, 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 you move slightly, okay, you put a delta pi of t here, uh, you take a pi t, pi t plus 1 and satisfy that, okay, it will be still another equilibrium. The question will be still an equilibrium which is close. For that, you, you take the derivative, okay, you consider that pi t is very close to pi star, and, and the derivative means phi prime, derivative of phi, multiplied by beta, multiplied by delta pi of t, equal delta pi of t plus 1. Now what I, so that's another equilibrium. What I want is that A, A is 1 over phi prime over beta, okay, A is 1 over phi prime over beta, be smaller than 1. So I, what I want is phi prime beta greater than 1. Okay, because in that, in that case, delta of pi t plus 1 will be greater than pi t plus 1. So the, the, will, the, the steady state will be isolated. Okay, that's the determinacy criterion. But that's the Taylor rule. Okay. The Taylor rule is that phi prime should be greater than 1 over beta. The reference equilibrium is locally isolated. And uh, so, so, so the, it gives you that the central bank should react to inflation more than 1 per 1. Okay, and more than 1 over beta. And so the Taylor rule has come from, uh, I don't know, we, we talked with Professor Arrow some days ago on how it, it appeared, but it associated with a Stanford professor, uh, John Taylor, it's called the Taylor rule, okay. Uh, was it based on theoretical work or on uh, empirical work? Because it turned out that this rule fitted to some extent what central banks were doing. Okay, and that we had a theory after that was developed. Okay, this theory has been developed a lot by, uh, for example, Mike Woodford on something like that, uh, and on some of his courses, but it's, it's a very standard theory. Here I present really the skeleton of the theory, but this is the basic argument of the theory. Okay, uh, and that, 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 that's, that's very nice because it's the uh, first time in history where uh, central bankers and academic researchers uh, were able to talk, in a sense, okay? Uh, because both of them understood the Taylor Wood, both of them are argument for the Taylor Wood, maybe not necessarily the same, but th they were pleased with that. Fortun unfortunately, with the crisis, uh, we are back to the previous period. Okay. Okay, now, so I'll, I'll go very, so, my equivalent theorem, I, I can show you that it's very general, but I will go very, very uh, quickly. No, the, 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 the most uh, standard model we, we use, uh, at least a, a more complex model, is a model in which it is one step forward looking one dimensional on memory one. Okay? You, uh, it's the same. What happens today depends on what you expect to happen tomorrow, but also on what happened yesterday. Okay? It's a more complex model. Uh, uh, naturally, I put here the, so, so the, this is the reduced form, okay, and you know that there are, uh, we, 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 we make the assumption that this equation bx2 minus x plus d, okay, b being there, d here, that gives the growth rate. Uh, that are compatible with remaining on the trajectory, okay, that, that's the solution of this <coughs> equation. So uh, we assume that it has real roots, okay, and that B, if B, which is true if BD is smaller than one fourth, and that B, it has a saddle point case with B plus D smaller than one. So what is the saddle point? Okay, that's my picture. Okay, it's YT, YT plus one. So here, is a saddle path solution. Okay, that means you start from here and uh, you consider the dynamics that was on the blackboard here uh, goes on and it brings you to here to, to zero. Okay, if, if there's some noise, it will, uh, it will lead you to some stationary state, something like that. Now, you have an, exp oh, I'm sorry. You, you have an explosive solution. And in between, you have a solution like this. Okay, that start going close to the steady state and, get, and go away. So again, you have an infinity of solution. Okay, and we, we economists, and for, since a long time, okay, 
select this one, okay. which brings us back to Vitter argument, to are we right to, to select this one? So again, uh, I, I will say yes uh, under, under some assumption. Uh, and the, the, the basic lemma is that you, you can write the, this equation maybe uh, in terms of growth rate. Maybe I did it or did not it on the previous slide. Maybe it's, yes. Basically, the idea is that uh, you can view this as a connection between the growth rate at period T that comes from the difference between period T minus 1 and period T on the growth rate at period T plus 1. Okay, so you can view it as a one step forward system in which G of T depends on G of T plus 1 expected. Okay, so you are back to the previous, to the previous argument. Okay. And uh, so you have the same theorem. I'll go. Uh, you, you have different criteria. First, determinacy. Okay. What is determinacy? That may be. The saddle pass solution is determined in several sense. Okay. It's determined in the sense that if you take a neighbor, there is no neighbor equilibrium. Okay. If you start with something that is neighbor, it goes very far away. Okay. It's also that in the perfect foresight dynamics of growth rate, there is no pass of growth rate that is close to this one. Okay. That's the C1 topology. Okay. Uh, now, Iterative expectational stability, in fact, which was invented in this context, is that people were thinking, okay, it was macroeconomics, people were thinking that the growth rate was G star plus epsilon instead of G star. And thinking about that, they realized, because uh, the realized growth rate is a function of the expected growth rate, they realized that it was G star plus KE with K smaller than 1. And then this, the argument was kind of deductive argument, okay, no, uh, of the same, at the same flavor as the one I... I, I, I stress, but uh, simpler, suggest that when it goes like this, we, sh we should believe in that. Okay. No absence of sunspot equilibrium, that's the same stuff. Okay. You, uh, you define sunspot for growth rate. Okay. And, and surprisingly, uh, we have the same theorem. The four criteria are equivalent in the one-dimensional case, and they pick up the same the saddle solution when it exists. Uh, so, uh, that's an objection to Bitter, uh, since, uh, in fact, if you think of expectational coordination, the only field in which economists have thought a lot about expectational coordination is macroeconomics, in fact. Much more than in my, at least my, my feeling that in the field I, I, I knew, I know more. Okay. In fact, because these people were, co were faced with this question of an infinity of infinite horizon solution. So the problem raised by Albuters, clearly we selected some solution, but it was not without some thought about the, the solution for selected. Okay. Now, I'll, uh, you, you, you can generalize that to uh, one step forward looking memory, one mem multidimensional models. I have done that with uh, several courses, but a rather technical paper, for example, de defining what is a saddle pass solution when you have a syst an n-dimensional system of this type, you, you have to think about what is, uh, you have to, def to define extended growth rate. But this is basically, uh, so these are papers, uh, technical papers uh, being in JET or something like that. Uh, so that's the equivalent theorem for the simple one dimensional one step forward looking. Uh, so basically for the general system, determinacy, Iterative expectational stability and absence of sunspot equilibria still give approximately the same, the same answer. If, if, you, if you take that as a condition for accepting a solution, it gives you a similar answer. Now, the, the question of what those learning rule becomes very complicated. Okay? We, we don't know what is the connection of adaptive learning with uh, all these criteria. And uh, again, for the, in terms of inductive learning, then uh, uh, inductive learning, the, the, the criterion is more demanding because it takes into account, vis-à-vis -vis iterative expectational stability, the heterogeneity of expectation. Okay. So, so heterogeneity of expectation may prevent the process of converging. Okay. So that's... Uh, <coughs> You're saying most people assume people are 
performing expectations in the same way? No, uh, iterative expectational stability, it's a process in which you assume that uh, you assume that people have point expectation. Okay. Yeah, but they're all the same. Not necessarily they have point expectation. Oh. Yeah, they're not necessarily the same. Yeah. Okay. But when expectations are not in a system in which in a one dimensional system in which when you have a higher expectation you react in the same direction as Eric, when he has a higher expectation, then from the viewpoint of the more demanding stability, it does not change many things. It, it, it's rather similar. In a more complex system, it, change, it may change the things a lot. Now, my, yes, my point is that uh, all this is, so I supported Dwitter, no, I will, uh, I will go against Dwitter, okay, because what you see in all these models, it's a model in which people are short-sighted. Okay. What happens today depends on what has happened tomorrow, uh, what has happened yesterday, and what will happen tomorrow. They are very short-sighted. Now, we have to, in, in modern macroeconomics, you assume that people are very long, uh, ex long run expectation. Okay. In RBC models, they have expectation from to plus infinity. And so I want to show you by taking a, a piece of an RBC model, showing you that, uh, stressing the fact that what people do, if we, are, if we accept our models, what people do today depends very much on what they think on the very long future in our RBC model. So I, I just want to illustrate this idea, and then I will come back to the Taylor rule if you take that into account. Okay. Uh, so it's, you should not go... I, I don't say, I, I put the model, it's really a very simple RBC model with your continuum of household. Each one has a unit of labor, okay, it supplies inelastically one unit of labor. There is capital, uh, and there is a production function that uses labor on capital that is uh, concentrated on to scale as usual. And I put emphasis, uh, and, and they have isoelastic, um, they have isoelastic preferences, okay, so that they this gives their, uh, the connection between their consumption at time t and their consumption at time t plus one, depending on the interest rate. And here it's, uh, it's supposed to be under uh, uh, an, an uncertain condition. And I put an emphasis on, uh, at this stage, on the steady state. Okay, what is the steady state in this model? It's a level of capital that remains forever. It's really like my model with mana, where nothing happened. Okay, here you have a level of capital and uh, you have an interest rate. And given that consumption is constant, naturally consumption is equal to uh, what is produced minus uh, part of capital that is, that is depreciated. Okay, you, you have an interest rate which is the marginal productivity of capital, a wage rate which is the marginal productivity of labor. Okay, uh, and I only want to see, assume that at the margin of that, uh, People think that you are, you are in this equilibrium, but you, 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 I want to see what happens if people believe that the interest rate for the future will be changed. Okay. How, how do they react today? And how do they react today is uh, given by the Euler equation which are here, so I, I, I have drop uncertainty, so that's a deterministic system. Uh, and you see, if you look at the Euler equations themselves, uh, so you have Ct as a function of Ct plus one, so, so you, have, you can have a Ct as a function of Ct zero, if you invert this formula and you, uh, and you group the terms, okay? So you see, you see that Ct, there is a specific expression that has this size, where you have the product of the interest rate, and you can see that dct over dc star uh, by um, uh, differentiating this uh, equation equal dc zero over dc star plus beta over sigma sigma over sigma t over d uh, of drs. Okay. Uh, so. Now, how, 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 how can you, 
So, so the question is, I want to see how sensitive are the consumption decisions today in this setting, to, to, to give you some idea, how sensitive they are to the interest rate. Okay. But I have to be, naturally, I, I have to, to go into a little bit more into a general equilibrium because uh, I will assume that the change in interest rate, in the, belie in the change in the, in the belief of the value of interest rate is, is associated with the change in the belief of aggregate capital. So they think that aggregate capital will be smaller, then they change that the interest rate will be higher, uh, will be, uh, uh, the marginal productive capital will be higher and so on. But now this change has no effect on, this change is just that if I want to have computation, here are the margin of this situation. If they believe, if they have a change in belief of, cap of, the, of the path of capital, it does not change their welfare. Why does it not change their welfare? Because uh, it change, it change the, 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 the change of capital has two effects. The change on the wage they get and the change on the interest rate, and they cancel. Okay. So the, there are two equations to understand what's going on. The first one is this one, as I mentioned here, and the second one is this one. There are no, no, no second order welfare. Okay. And then you put this equation together and you look at more closely, you see that what happens today depends on what happens uh, in the very far future. Okay? Uh, well, uh, an increase in rate of interest uh, in the future will lower your consumption today, but after that it will change your consumption over a very long, uh, over a very long period. And it's rather sensitive. So, so the, the message is only that. Now, if you come back to the Taylor rule, and if you think that people are infinitely lived here, then my exercise is debatable. Okay? Because in, in my exercise, I have assumed that what happens today depends on what people think about what will happen tomorrow. Okay. And uh, so I, I should put that, I, I should, on the fact that people have an infinite horizon view of the world. Okay? And I will have formula of the same kind okay? in, this, uh, uh, in this MANA problem. Okay? If you change interest rate, there's no, no welfare, no effect on welfare. That's why I have taken this effect. Why? Because uh, you, you have no exchange with the market. So if you change the price, it has no. To the, to the first order, it has no, no welfare effect. So we have the same formula as the one I, I presented here. I will not go into the formula. I will only. Uh, so you, you have to reduce the exercise. So you have to reduce the exercise within my uh, preferred uh, logic, okay? I assume that it's common knowledge that the inflation, uh, that inflation, there are stationary belief. People believe that inflation will be between pi star plus C. So we have the pi star is a reference equilibrium and pi star minus C, that's the neighborhood. Okay? And given that, given that they believe that, given that the central bank reacts with some rule, with a fee, okay, what happens for the economy, given that they, have, uh, they don't take into, only into account what happens next period, but what will happen the period after that. Okay. And, and, I, and I'll take limit belief, okay, for example, if you believe that it will all, always be pi star plus C, what, what will you do? Okay. And the question is that what you would like to do uh, you would like to do that with this change of belief, given the behavior of the central bank, then still the economy remains in the tube. And we, everybody, everybody believes that the inflation will be between pi star plus C, pi star minus C. Does this belief trigger action that are compatible with this belief, or will it be destroyed? Okay. And the answer is that it will not be destroyed, though here is the here is the computation. You know, it's used the formula I used previously, but now I rep RS depends on the inflation rate and on the um, reaction of the, uh, of the tail or the so-called Taylor rule. Okay. And, and the bottom line is that it's the next period that uh, if, you, if you take this, if you do this exercise seriously, then you find that phi prime, okay, the, the slope of the Taylor rule, has to be greater than 1 over beta, that's the standard Taylor rule based on determinacy, but it has to be smaller than this number. Okay. Basically, it has to be uh, approximately between 1 plus r and 1 plus 2r. Okay. It's far, it's called 3%, it should be. Uh, so, 
I don't claim that uh, Bernanke should adopt this rule. Okay, uh, I am not. <laughs> I, I don't think I have a lot of chance to convince uh, uh, to convince anybody that to adopt this rule. But uh, I just want to emphasize that if you take seriously the long horizon problem, then uh, Guiter's uh, concern may, may become uh, relevant. Uh, and naturally, if I, uh, I don't know whether I will try, but I, I, I will come to the, to the RBC model that I mentioned, and I will really look at what are the conditions for inductive stability. Okay? The fact that people believe that the capital stock will be in the neighborhood implies that it remains in a neighborhood. Uh, is there a neighborhood which it can be common knowledge? And the answer is never, never, never. Okay. So it's... Uh, it's, it's bitter. <laughs> now, how much time do I have? Maybe I should. Uh, 15 minutes. 15? 20? 15? Oh, we have a, a tight title because it's a European tour because we started a little bit. Oh, okay. <coughs> okay. But I want to, once we finish, I want you guys to stay here for another 10 minutes. So don't rush outside when the lecture is. Okay. <laughs> you assume that they will be so shocked by my talk that they will not move? <laughs> okay, so now I'll, I'll come, I will we'll give you some flavor of what I'm, I'm going away a little bit from uh, public economics. Until now, I think that's public economics. It's public macroeconomics, but it's public economics. Now, I, I just, I want, I want to, to, to tell you uh, something on the stock market. Okay, I've been, uh, I, I am absolutely uh, 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 worried by uh, with the stock market and with the understanding of the stock market. Naturally, not with the stock market itself. I, I, I have not, not many shares. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, anyway. So here, you see that the it's, it's on the Standard and Poor 500, and you see the return of the of the stocks. Uh, since uh, the end of the 19th century. Okay? And you see that this return, are, the fluctuation of this return okay, is variable, but uh, let me say every 20 years you have four or five big peaks on ups and downs. Okay? Uh, and uh, and s s some other uh, stylized fact is that over this period, then the share price have increased by 1.5% per year on average, uh, around, okay, I don't claim it's, it's, it's And the dividend were 4.5% 4 of the price of share. So the return were slightly above 6% on the period. But, uh, and this corresponds to price dividend ratio that is greater than 20, okay, long-term return that is greater than 6. And the fact that riskless assets have, uh, give you 1%, like that. So, so th th these are the basic facts. Okay, on the earth, it's, it's only reflects this basic fact. Okay, you have the price, uh, the, 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 the price of share is here, the, the, the dividend is somewhere on the, the price of share is here, the dividends are uh, come, come in addition of that. It's, okay, I, I, I will not. No. That, 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 that's striking. Okay, do we have explanation for that? I, I don't think so, that, uh, that we have satisfactory explanation. Uh, no, no, also, uh, you don't have only this fluctuation, you have also bubbles. Okay. I can show you, I have a, I have a collection of pictures of bubbles. Okay. Uh, they, they, they are very... Uh, uh, I have only taken one, the South Sea bubbles in 1720. Uh, and uh, that uh, ruined uh, Newton. Okay, who said, uh, I, I can uh, predict the movement of planets, but not the madness of men. Uh, no, that, well, like, what are the lines of explanation for the um, stock market? There are many lines. That, well, I will not go very far into any of these lines, but uh, that, that, that comes from the fundamental value principle. Okay? The firm is a dividend generator. 
Okay, so the price of the, sh the share price is the expected, uh, the discounted value of the expected dividend maybe uh, take into account some risk aversion. Okay? And uh, this has a partial equilibrium uh, version. For example, if you, if you assume that dividend grows at some rate G, and you, you know that the, you find that the price grows at the same rate G, and you have some, some idea of what should be the price. Okay? You, you divide by R minus G. Unfortunately, it does not uh, give a good account of what's going on. Okay? The, 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 the R that, uh, that you should take to make that uh, plausible is much higher than the risk less R. And uh, you, you, you have a lot of more variability of prices than of dividends, uh, which is not uh, absolutely what the story says. Now there is a number of, I would call, the general equilibrium fundamental value. Okay, that's uh, another uh, direction. It starts from the paper by Lucas, okay, where you have firms that uh, uh, receive mana, but it's random mana. And you, have a, you have a share, and you buy it, depending on, on the price of the share, on the, the, the dividend today. The dividend is the mana you get. Okay? And, and, there have been an, and, and that's better in the sense that share price reflects fundamental value of risk aversion. But it does not explain well, even rather badly, the risk premium. Naturally, you can cheat a little bit and put uh, a bit formation. Uh, it's slightly better. And naturally, the, the, it does not explain well the, the bubble still. Uh, so I could have talked about it. So there are many other lines. Uh, for example, we have fat tail. Okay. Uh, again, we had fat tail in climate. We have fat tail uh, in uh, stocks. We have fat tail everywhere. Uh, I just want to make in the an it's a description. It's a description, yes. If, if you, yeah, I quite agree. But you can put fat. For example, you can put uh, you can put fat tails in the Lucas type of model. Then you get uh, everything you you like. Uh, but it's not necessarily totally convincing. Uh, no, I just want to convince you that if you want to explain that, you have to 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 get ex somewhere expectational coordination failures. Okay, that's my uh, strong feeling. I am a, it's a minority feeling, a very, very minority feeling, but I'll try to give you some why I believe that. Okay. Uh, and I, I will show you just to the result of two, two models I have been involved in, uh, why expectational coordination is a relevant issue in the short run and why the difficulty of the long run coordination are likely to matter. Okay, so the first one, it's only... I'll take five minutes for each of it. Okay. It's a model I have. It's, it's an old model. I, I'm afraid it's not very new. Okay. It's a paper I wrote with uh, Jean-Charles Rocher, which appeared in 1993. And it was not popular, okay. Natural, probably because, uh, uh, maybe partly because of his title, okay. It was called Destabilizing Speculation. And that's why economists know that speculation is stabilizing. Okay. Milton Friedman has told us why uh, many times. So the speculation is stabilizing because uh, when prices go up, then speculators uh, uh, sell, and prices go down, they, 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 they buy because uh, no, I'm sorry, maybe it's the contrary. Okay, <laughs> okay, uh, so, so that, that puts the price. Uh, the, the, there is a return to, to, to the mean. Okay. Now, we Jean we consider a model, a very simple model. Uh, in which uh, you have the mana that falls from even at this period. It's wheat. Okay. And some people store. There are storage capacity. Okay. And storage capacity of inventory costs and so on. And naturally, next period, there will be a mana that falls. Okay. And uh, there will be a store. But we have two periods only. Okay. So now, if today you have a lot of mana, then you should store. Uh, and tomorrow, you will take advantage of that to sell because there will be, on average, less, less wheat. Okay. Uh, now, what is the, I, I go to the picture, maybe I explain the equilibrium of this model. So the equilibrium of this model is that, again, it's like in the Moose model, okay? You are at period T, people have mean variance utility, okay, the, the people who store, and you are at period T, and uh, what is stored depends on what is expected to be stored, okay? And that's given by this line. Uh, 
if you expect that nobody will store, then uh, there will be some response, okay, because given the what happens tomorrow. And the more you expect to be stored, and the, the less it will be profitable, because the, 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 the lower the weight price will be tomorrow. And then the, 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 the slope of this is given by something that relates with the, with the uh, exogenous parameter of the model, risk aversion, variance of the price of crop, variance of the crop, and so on, okay. in, in a very standard way. Now, also in this model, you can, you, you can use my preferred test, okay, and to see whether people thinking about it can converge. Okay, here you think, if they think about it, they know that the, they, they know that the storage will not be higher than that. They put here. If they know that storage will be not higher than that, they know that the response to storage will be greater than that, and, the, and so on. And you have a mental process that converges under some condition. Okay, so first is the storage economy. People store. Now, I will introduce speculators. Okay, that can be that are doing so, so good things for the world. Okay, so I will allow people who have no storage capacity to come into this market. Uh, there's a mass of speculators. Okay, so, so the, uh, uh, that's a future market that is introduced only. Okay, so, so there are more people that intervene. The mechanics is different because the speculator, uh, basically if you are, uh, if you store, uh, now you can sell on the, on the future market what, what you store. And you, and you become, in addition, a speculator. So uh, as a Producer, you have a, a sure price, okay, but you become a speculator in addition. Now, on the whole, what is the new equilibrium? The new equilibrium, conforming to Milton Friedman's suggestion, is better in some sense. You have less volatility of the equilibrium price, okay, because the speculators have, have, have played their role. Uh, and the new equilibrium is less volatile than the previous one. So speculation is good in this sense. Now, that's my point. If you look at expectational stability from the viewpoint I take, question is less good. Okay. Volatility decreases. So the, the equilibrium becomes better because you have more risk sharing. Okay. That's a standard argument. You have more risk sharing between the people who are there. But it's less plausible. Okay. So I don't, I don't claim that this should be taken as a policy recommendation, but I think that when we discuss about the uh, effects of introducing no new markets in a system, the, the fact that they may perturb eh, expectational coordination should be something that matters. Okay. Also, yeah, I agree, we don't have many. Now, my last point is I come to my RBC model. Oh no, here is another model, more recent model, because uh, 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 by Brock, uh, Holmes, and Wagener, which has a similar message. Okay, I will not go into the model. It's interesting. But furthermore, uh, can I should go into this model? It's arrow security, but I, I'm really not, not the time aware. But it's basically a, an evolutive learning. Okay, people have, um, uh, when they are successful, they adopt the successful strategy. Okay, and uh, there are some security, but it's not complete. Okay, and they learn. And what Brock, Holmes, and Wagener show is that the more security you have, uh, although it remains incomplete, the less you are likely to learn. Okay. So it has the same flavor as my uh, uh, paper. Now, in the RBC model, I'll give you some, some uh, flavor. Uh, just, I will put two results. Okay. Here you are in the RBC model, case fixed forever. But people believe that the capital can remain in a tube, in a modular. And uh, given that they are clever, they know that if it's in the tube, th th they can compute the interest rate. Okay. Uh, so, so they did use from, the from their conjecture on where, the, where we are in the tube, they did use where the equilibrium, where the interest rate is, which is not the equilibrium interest rate, they know the equilibrium. The question, we, we, we test the stability of equilibrium. Now, assuming that, is it the case, for example, if everybody believes that the capital will remain in a tube, that the interest rate will remain close to the rate interest rate, is it true that this will happen in the first period? That the first, 
Okay, if, if, if it's true, if you don't want this belief to be destroyed, okay, it should be true that if you have this belief, it's not destroyed at the first period. Okay? You need some condition, and they are not minor. Okay? So this belief may be destroyed at the first period. I will not comment the conclusion. They relate with uh, F double prime, sigma, and so on. And these conditions are stronger when you have elastic labor supply because it's more difficult to, to coordinate. Now, strong inductive stability in the sense that you think about the system and thinking about the system uh, like in the Moose model, you, you understand that the system will be closer to, 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 to the equilibrium that you initially believed and so on. That does not work at all here. Why? Because if you think that the system will be in a tube and you think about what the people will do at the first period, the second period, etc., after a while, what they will do in the rather large future becomes very far away from the equilibrium. So even at the first stage of the mental process, you cannot go further. You, 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 cannot, you cannot convince you in your mind that people will, will take decisions compatible with remaining in the tube in one century from now. You cannot. So you stop. Okay. So what you should do is really uh, do some mixture of uh, I don't know, uh, some mixture of adaptive and uh, I will not describe the stuff. Okay. I'm not sure I have the right formula. Okay. You should do something of adaptive. So the next step we did is that we, we look at a tube and we, s we, we ask the people to, as mental process cannot converge. Okay. So we are, you have to be bounded rational in a sense. Okay. So you use Adaptive learning rules, but adaptive learning rules that predict the, that, that gives you, uh, an equivalent value of long-term capital. Okay, because you, you are concerned with the long term. So what you want is a kind of aggregate, synthetical aggregate of a long-term capital. And you revise it from what you see on capital today. Okay, so, so we keep the idea that they have long run foresight. Okay. And uh, we look at whether this process remains in the tube. Okay. And uh, depending on the characteristic of the system. Okay. And the answer is that when, the, when at the first period you remain in the, okay, when my mental process led me to think that at the first period I will remain in, in, the, in the tube, then there are, which is this number smaller than one, then there are learning rules that allow to remain in the tube. But these learning rules are the closer C to 1, the, 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 the smaller is the subset of learning rules. And these learning rules are the contrary of learning rules that are asymptotically stable. They are learning rules where you have to react quickly. They are learning rules when you go outside the tube, you have to, rever to, to react quickly you have to react quickly. Okay? Standard learning rule, when you don't react quickly, go away from the tube. Okay. So if you think that you're in a society and that there are some convention beliefs that the, the, the capital should not be very far away, okay? in this world, with the learning rules that have good asymptotic property, then they will converge in one century, but they will go very far away from, the, from wh what we are in the next 10 years. Okay. So the idea of Okay, you might call a crisis the fact that you go away from this tube at some stage. Okay, those crises in this world are un unavoidable. Okay, maybe I should, I should stop on this. <laughs> I should stop on this. In, in what sense is deviating from uh, the tube a crisis? It's it's a it's a collective belief. Okay, if the collective belief is destroyed, why should you? Why, why, why should they believe that, uh, uh, in the, okay, we start from the elective view that you should have beliefs that people have their common beliefs, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. Here, naturally, you may say they don't care about, uh, we, we, we try to see whether this belief, which cannot be preserved under inductive learning, can be preserved under evolutive learning. And we find that it can be only in very, we need, there are conditions in which it can be. 
but not, not uh, uh, they are rather, rather special, can okay, depend on the characteristic of the system and so on. Some question or is it too?